the answer is yes, once, and that was smallpox. Smallpox remains the only human disease that has ever been eradicated from the world. Uh, polio will be the second. There was, footnote, there was a viral disease eradicated last year, but it was something called rinderpest, which affected cattle and not human beings. Polio will be the second, smallpox was the first. Sir. Why just polio vaccine when there are so many problems? The answer to that is that polio eradication is doable. This is something that we can do. We have the tools, we have the means to do it. When you look at some other diseases across the world, they are either impossible to eradicate or much more difficult to, to eradicate. One of the great tragedies, if we fail in this endeavor, and we won't, but if we did fail in this endeavor, there would be two results. One is that it would be the last time the world ever attempts to eradicate disease, because they will say, you guys had all this stuff going for you and you failed, so why should we try for anything else? And the second result, if we failed, would be that you would have, over the next five to 10 years, huge outbreaks of polio, like we saw in Tajikistan in 2010. And so the case numbers would go back up to thousands and then tens of thousands cases across the world. That's why failure is not an option. Sir? You mentioned that you were recently talking about the magnitude of the problems, but can you elaborate a little bit on the problems are there? Yes, sir. Uh, the question was, uh, since I've recently been in Pakistan, what are the problems there? Um, and that's really hard to answer in bullets. But let me just mention the three. Uh, first of all, it was a question of government commitment to this effort, not only at the federal level, but also at the province level, and most importantly, at the local district level. A lot of the government officials were not sufficiently on board. Second problem was our own problem within the partnership. WHO um, dropped the ball a little bit, not much, but you know, it had to reduce the number of staff due to lack of funding and due to security issues. There's a lot of security problems in that country. When I traveled to Quetta and Peshawar, I was driven around in an armored vehicle, uh, bulletproof glass, um, reinforced doors, and so on and so forth, uh, because of the security issues in the country. Finally, and thirdly, and only I can say this because my home agency in the UN system was UNICEF, UNICEF totally dropped the ball. Please don't quote me. <laughs> they totally dropped the ball in 2010 due to the floods in the country, and all the polio workers were diverted to doing flood relief. And so 2010, uh, UNICEF was absent from the effort. I changed that while I was there. That's the one that I accomplished in the last two years. Time for one more question, and then I think that's it. Yes, sir. question is, how and where does the virus survive outside the human body? And sorry, the second half was, what is done to get it? To attack it at that point, yeah. Um, it survives in the environment. Uh, polio is a, is a fecal oral disease. That is, people with polio excrete the virus. Uh, once they have polio in their gut, it multiplies, replicates, it's excreted, and then it infects on the so it does survive in the environment, it survives in sewage, it can survive uh, on land, and it can survive anywhere from a few hours to a few days in ideal conditions, a few weeks. Uh, we track it in places like Pakistan, we do environmental sampling of various uh, water supplies uh, throughout the country so that we know where the virus is. And in the case of Pakistan, it's all over the country, unfortunately. In the case of India, it's in fewer and fewer places. What do we do to attack it there? The answer is nothing. Uh, because we can't. That is, the, the polio virus that is circulating in sewage or in, in water supplies, there's nothing that we can do about that. We've got to attack it at the source, which is children's bodies who have been infected by it. I think my time is up. Thank you very much for inviting me here today. It's been a pleasure.
lot like you and I do. And they were having fun, and they, you could tell they were all traveling as a group, put their luggage away, and get situated. The unfortunate part about that flight, Carmen, you may have taken it, is it stops over in Rome for refueling. And uh, you don't get off the plane. <laughs> So we were standing there on a the plane and people were talking and stretching and I walked back to this group of people. I kind of was interested to know who they were. And I noticed one of the guys had a shirt and it had a rotary wheel on it. And I said, are you Rotarian? He said, we're all Rotarians. And I said, really, what are you doing going to Addis Ababa, Ethiopia? And he said, well, we're, we're going down country a bit, down by Awas, and we were going to do uh, polio eradication projects. We got off the plane and got our luggage and I was working with Clinton Foundation. So we went up country, they went down country and about four days later we all ended up meeting back together, staying at the Hilton Hotel. And I walked over to see these people and they said, how did it go? And this man and his wife looked at each other and they kind of got teary and they said, it was something that has absolutely changed our lives. And they told me about what it had done for them to be a part of eradicating polio. When you walked in today, you were given a, a, a little sample of breath mints. This isn't going to help you with polio. It will help you with Andre's meatloaf. <laughs> <laughs> but the idea with these breath mints is every time you do two drops of this on your tongue, and your tongue feels good, and your breath smells better, that's all the more effort that it takes to accomplish this mission of eradicating polio. That's it. And the only thing we need to do is to get it from here to there. To get it from the bottles onto the tongues of all of those kids in these countries that we just heard about. And to do that, we've got to have some resources. Now, we don't usually ask for money at lunch at Rotary, but today we're going to do this. We're going to see how close we can get hit our goal and raise $19,000 in this club. That's about $175 a member in this club to see what we can do to be our part of that goal. There are a couple of Rotarians among us who have said for every dollar that's raised today, I'll match it up to $6,000. That's a pretty cool thing. So your money is going to get doubled today. We also have another match, and that's uh, some of these points, these Paul Harris points. I can tell you, I don't completely understand it yet, but we got points. So for every dollar you get, $100, $500, that counts towards your Paul Harris belt. And so you could do that today. You could donate $100 and you get $200 worth of credit toward your next Paul Harris fellowship. Now I know that there are folks here who have experienced polio in their own family. Grant Wilkins did, and that was why he got the money. I got to think that maybe there's somebody in our club today that would say, you know what, our goal is 18, you got a pledge for six, I'll do another six. And we can take care of two thirds of this today. If that's you, would you come and let us know when this is over? I'm not going to make you stick up your hand and embarrass you right now, but that would be a very cool thing if you could do that, and you would match that. $12,000 toward our goal. We've also got some other things that uh, should inspire you. I mean, if matches and matches don't work, um, we have some pins. Now, these pins are $500, and they are made especially for polio. And I'd like to just start auctioning these things off right now. I've got about 20 of these, so we can stay here till 3. <laughs> <laughs> Does anybody want to buy one of these for five minutes? Very quickly, just stick up your hand and we'll get into you. Oh, bless you. Thank you. There's one. How many more? Two. 